Hi, welcome to Manasal Official's High Yield Harrison Based Videos. Let's learn about Wilson's disease in this session. So in this video, we will look at the etiopathogenesis of Wilson's disease, the clinical features, the investigations, scoring systems, and the treatment. Coming to the pathogenesis, for this, let's learn a little about copper transport in the hepatocytes. Dietary foods rich in copper include chocolates, mushroom, and seafood. Copper absorbed from these foods go into the gut enterocytes and is transported to the liver, that is the hepatocytes. Once inside the hepatocytes, this copper, with the help of the gene ATP7B, is incorporated with aposeruloplasmin to form the bound copper ceruloplasmin complex. This copper ceruloplasmin complex comes out of the hepatocytes and is excreted into the biliary sinusoids. Now remember, the total serum copper consists 95% of the bound copper ceruloplasmin complex, while the free copper is only 5%. Now, in Wilson's disease, what happens is that the ATP7B gene is deficient. Hence, the copper ceruloplasmin complex is not formed. Copper thus starts accumulating in the hepatocytes. However, the free copper does come out of the hepatocytes and its level in the serum thus starts increasing. Hence, now putting it all together, serum ceruloplasmin levels decrease. The total serum copper levels decrease. The reason being bound copper ceruloplasmin complex is 95% of the total copper, whereas free copper comprises only 5% of this total copper, while levels of the free copper in the serum and urine start increasing. Now let's learn about the clinical features. The disease mainly affects females in the age group 3 to 50 years. Liver is the most common organ which is affected, hence the copper which accumulates is toxic for the hepatocytes. Typically, macronodular type of cirrhosis occurs and there is increased risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. Central nervous system can also get affected, most common site being the basal ganglia. Patients can have typical tremors known as the wing beating tremors, as shown here. Other CNS manifestations include Parkinsonism like picture, cranial nerve affection, mainly the 12th cranial nerve is affected, and autonomic nervous system involvement. Important to remember here is that the sensory and the motor systems are not affected. Coming to the eye findings that are typical, the typical caser flesher ring, known as the KF ring, is seen at the periphery of the cornea. This KF ring is found in 50 to 60 percent cases of hepatic Wilson's disease, while the prevalence of this ring in neuro Wilson's is 90 to 95 percent. Another eye finding which is typical is the sunflower cataract. Functional damage can occur at the level of the kidneys, typically at the level of the PCT, leading to the renal tubular acidosis type 2, which can present as the Fanconi syndrome. Another important manifestation is, is the Combs negative hemolytic anemia, which occurs due to the structural damage to the RBCs because of the excess copper levels. Coming to the investigations, as already discussed in the pathogenesis, the serum ceruloplasmin levels decrease. The serum total copper levels will decrease as the bound copper ceruloplasmin complex levels are going to decrease. Serum free copper levels increase and the urine free copper levels also increase. Now please note that the urine free copper levels is the screening test of choice for this condition. The confirmatory test is however the liver biopsy. Typically the liver copper is more than 200 micrograms per gram of dry liver weight and this clinches the diagnosis. Some other important histopathological findings include steatosis, peripotal fibrosis, presence of glycogenated nuclei. Stains used in liver biopsy for staining copper include rubenic acid and orsine. Another characteristic finding seen on the MRI brain is the face of the giant panda sign. Coming to the scoring systems used, two scoring systems are in place. The modified Leipzig scoring system is for establishing the diagnosis where a score more than 4 establishes the diagnosis. Another scoring system is a NASR's prognostic scoring system where a score more than 9 indicates a bad prognosis and the need for liver transplant. Now let's learn about the treatment. Diets rich in copper like chocolates, mushroom and seafood need to be avoided in these patients. Treatment in zinc increases copper absorption from the serum. Copper chelators are also used for treatment. 
These include D-penicillamine and triantine. These help by increasing the copper excretion from the serum. Decompensated liver disease and a score more than 9 on another's prognostic scoring system indicates need for liver transplant. Thank you for watching this video. Do like the video and subscribe to the channel to motivate us to come up with more high yield content. Follow our Instagram page for learning one topic per day. Apart from this, you can also subscribe to our online internal medicine course, details of which are in the description below.